During the First World War, a group of British soldiers led by Lieutenant Turner are in a trench battling the Germans. Private Lewis, Private Gray, and Lance Corporal Walker are in the middle of resting in the trench when Lieutenant Turner arrives. He reprimands them for slacking off while the war is ongoing and urges them to keep watch of their enemies outside. Later, American officers Captain Hall, Private Segura, and Private Baker enter the trench. Captain Hall offers his assistance to Lieutenant Turner, assigning their new recruits, Segura and Baker, to help their unit. Private Segura is a medic who rarely carries a gun with him, while Private Baker is a young and amateur soldier. On another note, Lieutenant Turner is dismissive, immediately rejecting the help from the Americans. Captain Hall then replies that the order came from Major General Allen, who is also demanding for Lieutenant Turner's report on their current situation. Lieutenant Turner heads with Captain Hall to his makeshift office, where he informs Hall that both the British and the Germans have strained their resources and are just waiting for each other to starve. Just then, Private Lewis shows up in the office, reporting that the German troops have apparently retreated since their outpost is empty. Lieutenant Turner sends out an explosive but gets no response, confirming that the Germans are nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, Gray becomes acquainted with Segura and Baker. As a hardened British soldier who has experienced war, Gray offers them a drink. Gray attempts to intimidate the soldiers as he tells them about no man's land, which are countless trenches and tunnels that had been used and abandoned during the war. He jokingly advises the two newbie American soldiers to watch their surroundings closely. That same day, Lieutenant Turner orders a meeting with his entire military unit, including Private Gray, Private Lewis, Lance Corporal Walker, Captain Hall, Private Baker, and Private Segura. Lieutenant Turner announces that the Germans have fallen back, allowing them to cross their trench and claim it. Captain Hall is unsure, however, suggesting that they should hit more weapons on the Germans first just to be sure. Despite his warning, Lieutenant Turner is convinced that they must move, ordering his men to follow his lead while they cross. Slowly, the soldiers crawl on the ground until all of them reach the German trench. On his way, Baker encounters a German soldier. Baker manages to prevent the German soldier from making any noise by killing him, but ends up shaken from his first kill. As they explore the trench, the unit is surprised to find that the trench has been abandoned. They also notice that the entrance to the German bunker has been sealed from the outside. Despite their confusion, the unit unseals the entrance and carefully enters the bunker. Inside, the German bunker is dark and emits a foul odor. The unit uses their lighter to see through the dark and are able to avoid a tripwire. Lieutenant Turner cuts the wire, allowing them to continue unharmed. They later find the switch to the lights in the bunker and grow shocked at the sight of a dying German soldier nailed and tied to a cross. Through Lieutenant Turner's orders, the German soldier who was later identified as Kurt is brought down from the cross. He asks Segura to tend to Kurt's wounds, thinking that they can question Kurt about what happened to the bunker. As the unit is about to leave the German bunker with Kurt, the entrance gets bombed and poison gas is dropped inside. The entrance closes, forcing Lieutenant Turner and his unit to be stuck inside the bunker. The soldiers run to another room, where they hurriedly wear masks to protect themselves from the poisonous gas. Gray, on the other hand, is fatally injured from the explosion. Lewis tries to help Gray out of the heavy debride, but fails as the poisonous gas begins to spread. He is then forced to leave Gray and help Segura block the smoke from further coming into the other room. As the gas subsides, Lieutenant Turner checks the area with Lewis and Baker, where they see Gray's lifeless body. At the same time, Segura mends Walker's injury after being stabbed by a sharp object. After their brief inspection, Lieutenant Turner assigns Lewis and Baker to take over Walker's duties in communicating with the British outpost. Lieutenant Turner stares at Gray and takes his dog tag before heading back. Later, he summons Kurt and asks him if he was a traitor to his country. Kurt remains quiet, however, as he refuses to answer any of Lieutenant Turner's questions. Meanwhile, Segura is in the middle of digging a hole underneath the main entrance to create an escape route. He notices a writing on a shell casing of the poison gas in which he figures out that the Germans have bombed their own outpost. Segura also notices unusual white liquid dripping from the ceiling of the bunker. Inside their makeshift communications room, Lewis reveals himself to be a religious fanatic as he invites Baker to pray with him. The two of them offer a short prayer for Gray when they hear a frequency from Walker's jacket. Lewis tries to connect with their outpost to call for help. Walker, in the meantime, is recovering from his injury but suffers an uncontrollable itch all over his body. Walker starts to cut his skin to relieve himself from the itch. Lewis sees Walker and tries to stop him from further cutting himself but to no avail. Shortly after, Lieutenant Turner and the rest of the unit arrive to stop Walker. Baker goes into shock seeing Walker and decides to step out of the communications room. 
he stumbles upon a mass grave full of dead German soldiers immediately backing away. Segura finds Baker alone and empathizes with him. Segura makes Baker realize that he has to get over his fear even if he is a rookie because they are at war. Back in the communications room, Walker has calmed down and is sleeping soundly with Lewis watching him. As Lieutenant Turner enters the room, Lewis apologizes to him for failing to save Gray. Lewis thinks that Gray would have done more for the unit than him if he was still alive. Right before Lewis breaks down in tears, Lieutenant Turner consoles him. He encourages Lewis to be more courageous for the sake of their survival before letting him rest for the meantime. While Lewis is sleeping, Walker gets up and slowly approaches him. Kurt sees Walker but deliberately stays quiet. He watches as Walker turns against his comrades, stabbing Lewis' leg with a shovel and attempts to attack the other soldiers. Shortly after, Walker starts vomiting white viscous fluid along with a small squid-like entity, shocking everyone in the room. As soon as he is finished, Walker backs away and falls unconscious on the ground. Segura checks on Walker and confirms that he is no longer breathing. They then place Walker along with the other soldiers in the mass grave. When Segura returns to the communication room, he hears a voice coming from the radio. He reports their situation and is informed by their contact that a rescue team will be sent to their location. Their contact also instructs Segura to keep Kurt safe because he is a priority but does not tell him the reason. Segura heads to Lieutenant Turner, who is currently working on the hole. Segura informs the lieutenant about his conversation on the radio but instead gets scolded for using the radio without his permission. Lieutenant Turner goes berserk and dismisses Segura, despite explaining that Lewis was not on his post when their contact came in. Shortly after, Lieutenant Turner notices that he is not acting himself and decides to take a rest. He instructs Segura to make their prisoner, Kurt, continue with the digging. For a while, Segura keeps watch of Kurt while writing in his journal. Kurt notices him and curiously asks to whom he is writing to. Segura replies that he is writing for the community and explains that he used to teach medicine. He also tells Kurt that he volunteered to participate in the war because he felt obliged to do his part. Later, Segura brings up the mysterious white fluid that came out of Walker, asking Kurt about it. Kurt says that man is very similar to a sheep who brings himself into trouble without a shepherd. However, there is a devil that exists in the guise of a shepherd. In another room, Lewis and Baker are checking the remaining food supplies in the bunker. Lewis briefly expresses how he feels worthless in their unit, insisting that he now has an excuse to go home. Just then, Lewis and Baker discover that all of the remaining food supplies have the same white fluid inside and can no longer be consumed. Lewis reports this to Lieutenant Turner and tries to convince him to turn to God, because everything that is going on in the bunker is related to the gospel. On the other hand, Lieutenant Turner concludes that they have to focus their strength in digging the hole to be able to get out soon. He urges Lewis to be rational, saying that they only have each other to rely on. Lieutenant Turner is unable to trust Kirk, their German prisoner as well as the American soldiers in their unit. After their talk, Lewis returns to the communications room and reads his Bible while caressing the squid-like entity. Meanwhile, Kurt, Baker, and Segura take turns in digging the hole. While Segura is alone, he notices unusual white roots growing out from the ground. Just then, a loud sound alarms the soldiers, mistaking it for a gas breach. Eventually, they realize that it was a false alarm, which angers Lieutenant Turner. All of a sudden, he begins to accuse Segura of conspiring with Kurt into going inside the bunker. Lewis manages to stop Lieutenant Turner from unintentionally stabbing Segura with a knife. Seemingly coming into his senses, he apologizes to Segura and quickly orders Baker to force Kurt back to digging. Baker is stunned and unable to move as Lieutenant Turner points his knife at him. Segura interrupts, telling Lieutenant Turner that he is unwell, but Lieutenant Turner warns him to not question his decisions and his authority. As time passes, the tension inside the bunker continues to rise due to their earlier confrontation. The soldiers of the military unit have subtly turned against each other, consumed by mistrust. Segura eventually picks up a weapon for protection, instructing Baker to stick with him, as the two Americans form an alliance with Kurt. While the three of them take a rest from digging, Baker says that he feels like a prisoner inside the bunker. He thinks that it is impossible for them to make it out of the bunker alive, mentioning how Lieutenant Turner and Lewis are starting to behave strangely. Segura, on the other hand, remains strong-willed. He encourages Baker to focus and believe that they can escape the bunker. They get back to digging, when Segura stumbles across the tripwire that had been cut. He keeps it a secret from Baker and arrested the soldiers, as he covers the wire with sand. In the other room, Lieutenant Turner sharpens his knife quietly. Meanwhile, Lewis gets an update from their contact. Lewis says that he is not sure how long he and the other soldiers can stay alive inside the bunker.
Their contact advises Lewis to not lose hope and become the person who will lead their unit to salvation. Lewis listens quietly in deep thought. He informs Lieutenant Turner that the rescue team is already on the move to help them. Lewis is then instructed by Lieutenant Turner to gather enough weapons to defend themselves. Later, Lieutenant Turner calls a meeting with Kurt and the remaining soldiers, Segura and Baker. He addresses the existing tension between them, urging them to leave it behind them. Lieutenant Turner disarms himself and encourages the rest of the soldiers to surrender their weapons for the sake of their alliance. He also reminds them that he is still the highest ranking official in the bunker and that his judgment should be maintained. Moreover, Lieutenant Turner says that they still have to be wary of the rescue team who will be coming to save him. Segura, Baker, and Kurt decide to follow Lieutenant Turner, dropping their knives on the ground. After the meeting, Lewis returns to the communications room. Unbeknownst to everyone, he collects the white liquid dripping on the ceiling and drinks it from a cup. Lieutenant Turner has ordered Kurt to stay on the corner while Segura and Baker continue to dig through the hole. After a while of digging, Segura discovers that they are close to reaching the trench walls. He crawls into the hole and cracks the wall further until he finds another bunch of white roots. When Segura tries to pull the roots, he finds it coming out of a person's dead body. Just then, the walls around the hole begin to crumble. Segura takes the tag from the corpse and manages to crawl out of the hole in time. He checks the dog tag and learns that the dead body was Captain Hall. Kurt quietly stares at his small figurine. A memory from his childhood flashes, wherein he is holding the same figurine while walking towards a mysterious entity. Meanwhile, Baker and Segura sit on the ground, exhausted. The walls around the hole have collapsed, and they realize that all the work they put into digging has gone to waste. As Baker leaves, Segura catches sight of a portion on the ceiling filled with white roots. He stares at the ceiling intently when he is interrupted by Baker. Baker beckons Segura to the other side of the bunker, where they find Lewis holding Lieutenant Turner hostage. Lewis also carries a small bomb with him, intending to kill the lieutenant. While Segura and Baker try to calm Lewis, Lewis explains his belief that there is no other higher power aside from God. He starts praying but Baker intervenes and tries to put the pin back on the bomb, but to no avail. Lieutenant Turner manages to move away from Lewis right before the bomb explodes. Lewis, however, suffers a fatal injury. He apologizes to Lieutenant Turner for what he did, insisting that he only did it to make him proud. Lieutenant Turner tells Lewis that he is proud of him just before he dies. He stares at Lewis questioningly while his body quickly rots. On the corner, Baker panics as he sees one of his hands amputated. Segura rushes to help Baker, covering his injury with a cloth. He runs to the communication room, where their contact is seemingly trying to reach them. Segura answers to the radio, calling for their immediate assistance. Their contact replies that they cannot go to them on time, unless they can guarantee the safety of Kurt. Segura questions the importance of Kurt to them, but the contact does not answer. As a result, Segura becomes suspicious of their contact. Shortly after, Kurt enters the room and shoots at the radio, which turns out to be emitting the same white viscous liquid. Segura takes the gun from Kurt and shoots at the radio continuously. He opens the military radio only to find out that it is being controlled by a squid-like entity the entire time. Segura then realizes that they were fooled and that there is no rescue team that will come to help them. He checks the wires behind the radio, which are revealed to be the same white roots he has seen around the bunker. Desperate for answers, Segura points the gun at Kurt, demanding him to explain what is happening. Kurt finally reveals that the mysterious entity in the German bunker is called the Angel of War. According to Kurt, the Angel of War is a dark guardian that is lifeless, deathless, damned, and fallen. Kurt adds that the Angel of War is all things bad and exists to consume all that is good in a person. On another note, it needs a vessel to survive and can exist only in conflict. All the while, it is the Angel of War that gets inside the soldiers and leads them to turn against each other. It is the devil in the guise as a shepherd, which he was pertaining to earlier. Kurt then reveals that he is just a lamb who is dependent on the curse of such an entity. Segura asks Kurt how to stop the Angel of War, but to his dismay, he learns that it cannot be stopped. Around the same time, Lieutenant Turner has gone insane as he starts whispering to himself. Just then, he feels white liquid dripping on his soldiers. The liquid continues to gush on Lieutenant Turner until he starts soaking on it. Soon, Lieutenant Turner is completely consumed by his own darkness as he starts pointing the blame to Segura for the death of his British soldiers. He sees Segura with Kurt, calling him a traitor for colluding with their enemy. A fight ensues as Lieutenant Turner shoots Kurt, making him fall on the ground. Baker shows up and attacks Lieutenant Turner from behind, 
but he is knocked unconscious. Segura pushes Lieutenant Turner on the ground and the two of them fight each other aggressively. Lieutenant Turner catches sight of a knife and uses it to stab Segura. He walks away, feeling triumphant right before the walls of the bunker begin to fall apart. Lieutenant Turner looks up at the ceiling and notices a hole above, covered by the white roots. He lets out a menacing laugh when suddenly, Baker appears behind him. Baker shoots Lieutenant Turner continuously until he dies. Shortly after, Segura wakes up and finds Kurt unconscious. He gets his bag and tries to mend Kurt's wound, but Kurt insists that they leave him inside the bunker. Segura decides to tend to Baker's injury first when he notices the hole in the ceiling. He works on reaching the ceiling by gathering a few crates. Segura helps Baker climb up on the ceiling and the two of them manage to get out of the bunker. Baker confesses to Segura that he is only 16 and he lied about his age to enlist in the army. Segura then relieves Baker that he is going to be alright. Just then, two soldiers arrive at their location and are able to take Baker away in a stretcher. Segura, on the other hand, decides to return to the bunker, hoping to save Kurt as well. To his dismay, he sees that Kurt is already dead and his body has completely rotten. Segura notices a glowing circle that has sprouted from inside Kurt's body. He finds himself drawn towards it until he gets a vision of himself being surrounded by a cloud of smoke. Segura comes face to face with a young boy inside a trunk made of white roots. As Segura gets pulled into the trunk, he wakes up and meets the demonic entity referred to as the Angel of War. The entity, seemingly composed of dark roots, slowly approaches him. While Segura continues to resist, he begins to vomit white liquid. Realizing that he is close to being consumed by the demonic entity, Segura decides to kill himself along with it. In the end, Segura crawls towards a tripwire he found earlier and pulls it hard, triggering an explosion that destroys the entire bunker. Outside the bunker, Segura's journal lingers on the ground and gets covered with soil. Despite being released in 2022, the film succeeds in bringing back the classic vibe that horror movies used to have. This is evident from the opening and closing credits to the music score throughout the film. On the other hand, the film is very slow-paced and has the tendency to make the viewers uninterested halfway. It has taken too long to show the climax, only to have a predictable and somewhat senseless ending. Furthermore, the main antagonist of the film has not been properly depicted. There is no clear indication on the identity of the Angel of War. Nonetheless, it is worth mentioning that the film has lots of potential and certain things could have been done differently. Rather than focusing on its horror genre, it might be better viewed as a psychological thriller since there is more emphasis on the development of the characters rather than the plot.